All right, so we've already started with a little bit of JavaScript. Let's go ahead and clean this up a bit because what we don't want to do is actually put our JavaScript on the page. It's definitely not bad to test with, and I actually do it all the time if I'm like, you know, testing some quick function or something like that. I just want to make sure something's working. It's easier for me to keep it all on the page, but the second I'm done with it, I move it into its proper place, which is in a separate JavaScript file. So we're just going to right click on our main folder, choose new folder, type in JS, right click on the JS folder, choose new file, and we're going to save it as main.js. Then what I can do is copy all of this, paste it in here, move that back, put these script tags right next to each other, and we'll do src equals js forward slash main.js and now it's linked. So now we can just go in here and write all of our JavaScript in here. So we've already done console.log, document.write, and an alert. So let's go ahead, for the purposes of keeping this simple, I'm just gonna comment all of these out. And we can just write a bigger comment for like lesson one. And this would actually be a good example of when you could use that asterisk forward slash uh, for now, I'm just going to keep that forward slash forward slash because when I do my command question mark for my Mac or control question mark on a PC, it Sublime Text automatically chooses to do the two forward slashes. Let's move into something which is critical for all programming languages, which is variables. So variables are ways to save your data. So let's go ahead and just write one out right now. We'll just do var. Now var is a keyword that declares that the next thing I want to write is a variable. All right, num, and we're going to do prompt, what's your name? Now prompt is very similar to dot write and dot log and alert. And then it pops up an alert, except it asks a question. And then by declaring it inside of a variable, we actually save that value. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to refresh the page. You'll notice document direct goes away. There isn't another hello world under here because all that's commented out. It's asking, what's my name? And I'll just write Matt. All right. So nothing happened, right? It's saved. So let's just mess around with this and see what we can get. We can do console.log num which prints out Matt. Let's go back into our code. You know, let's actually change this to name. That actually makes a bit more sense. We'll do console.log name. This is connected directly to the variable. So I'm saying console.log the variable. And the variable is whatever answer we give it inside of the prompt. So I'll do Matt again. Press OK, and now we console.log my name down there. So that's how easy it is just to save a variable using prompt. One other thing you'll notice is that we're not using semicolons. If you've used other uh, JavaScript tutorials, they'll always include semicolons. It's something a lot of people talk about, and this is actually something that was recently changed. We no longer need to include semicolons. So just do not do it. It's just a waste of your time. Um, some people still might claim that you need to do it. It's simply because they just don't know. Um, a lot of people don't keep updated on what's going on with uh, the changes in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So it's really critical that you kind of stay on top of that as a programmer, just so you can know these little tiny shortcuts, um, you know, or, or bigger things also get changed all the time. So just remember, you do not need semicolons anymore for JavaScript.